Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, my name is Ray Pasinli. I'm one of the executive directors. Uh, I own a firm called TotalApps.com. We've been specializing in e-commerce payments for about 17 years. And we have been involved in payments since the good old days of the 1990s. So having that kind of historical perspective, it allows me to kind of look back in the past and see some very unique trends that may not be obvious to you. Um, we're going to take a little trip down history. And in 1994, the very first credit card transaction was done online. And it was actually an order for Pizza Hut. And, uh, you know, since that magnificent spark of creativity and the event that transcended the Internet age, uh, we have seen a ginormous growth in Internet and e-commerce since that time. But if we look at that time period from 1994 to, to about 2004, that generation, that era was called uh, the dot bomb era, you know, and they had this attitude of build it and they will come. I mean, they had things like pets.com and home grocer and all these kinds of <coughs> business models that were going to revolutionize how we shop and consume. When you look at the style of websites from back in the late 1990s, those were all meant to be consumption-based websites. They were static. They were not easy to edit. They were not easy to update. You had to know HTML. You had to have a web editor. And it took a, somebody with a degree in rocket scientist, uh, as a rocket scientist to be able to upgrade your website. So they were really kind of fixed properties. Um, in 2004, something changed. And we had the advent of what we call social media, or the web 2.0 experience. Pin it, like it, share it. And really, the forefront of that was MySpace, right? How many of you actually had a MySpace account? How many still use your MySpace account? The point is, is that this was an era when user-generated content drove innovation. For the first time, the layman, the average consumer, somebody who didn't know HTML, had the ability to impact and put a, uh, their footprint on the web. And really, this started the whole social media boom, but it's been about 10 years since that launched. And so what does the future look like? We're now into the, to the third uh, generation or third decade of, of e-commerce. Well, obviously, Web 3.0 comes next. But what does that look like? Based on what we see, we see, we see the future as a convergence of Web 1.0, commerce combined with Web 2.0, social commerce, social to give us this Web 3.0 social commerce experience. And we're starting to see that today. I mean, every single person in this room has made buying decisions based on what other people said. Okay, when I got my iPhone 6, I found the case that I wanted and the first place I went was Amazon.com. Right? And I looked down there, there were 72 people selling the same exact case, and there was one guy who had one penny cheaper available. He had no stars. He did not get my order. And the guy that was one penny more expensive got my order because he had five stars on his seller rating. People are making buying decisions because we've kind of turned and morphed into this social commerce consumption herd. We make buying decisions based on what our peers are doing. We make buying decisions based on what experts are recommending. You know, when you go to things like uh, newegg.com, you look at the peer reviews. Oh, this is a great monitor. This monitor sucks. If you're a gamer, buy this, right? So we're making those buying decisions based on the influence of our social sphere. So you're starting to see some really unique, compelling examples of this. And I'll give you an example. I'm from Southern California, and I like buying Laker tickets when they have winning seasons. And uh, I tend to go at the last minute and buy my tickets from Ticketmaster. And I saw something really cool uh, a while back. When I logged into Ticketmaster and I was looking at the, LA, at the Staples Center to pick my seats, I saw all these Facebook icons littering all over the, 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 the arena. And so when I moused over one of the Facebook icons, it blew my mind. It was one of my friends. One of my friends, in fact, all of the friends that I had in my Facebook that were going to that game at that time, I could now make my buying decision not based on what's the cheapest seat or the best seat or has the closest view or whatever that case may be. I can make my buying decision based on where my friends are going to sit. That is revolutionary. That's where social commerce is at its purest. When the intent to buy, you have the ability to influence that buying decision based on the social 
uh, influence of that person. How many of you remember the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? How many did the Ice Bucket Challenge? Oh, we got a couple victims over here. Okay, how many actually donated? Okay, so we got a lot of hands up saying I saw it. I got a couple hands that said I did it. I got a few that said, yeah, I gave money. It was a phenomenal success, hyper viral. They raised over $100 million in 30 days. The previous year, it took them the entire year to raise $25 million. So in 30 days, they raised $100 million. But to a certain extent, it was a dismal failure because it broke the rules of what social commerce is. And we'll get into that in a little bit. It was hyper viral. It was easily mobile. It was very social. But there wasn't an easy way to donate. I mean, you have to look at it from the user experience. I got my broke second cousin from Oklahoma calling me out from his trailer park saying, yeah, I donated money and you should donate money too. I said, OK. Well, I know he didn't donate, but let me see. I play the video. I got to rewind it. I got to listen for the URL. I got to leave Facebook. I got to open up a browser. I got to type the URL correctly. I got to search around the website to find the donate button. I mean, 17 steps. I might as well, you know, paint my house and do my laundry. I can do it faster, right? So when the time is right and you have that engagement, it's critical to be able to convert that sale uh, at that moment. So we're seeing some really interesting things starting to come into the marketplace. All of the social media have finally figured it out. You know what? Eyeballs are kind of worthless. When was the last time you clicked on a Facebook banner ad? No way, man. I don't want them catching my data. They're going to redirect and pop me up, and they're going to take me away from that cat video, and I don't want to have anything to do with that. Consumers, our target audience has been trained for the last 15 years, don't click on anything on the sides of the video, right? So user engagement is what it's all about today. And, and as a perfect example, look at Twitter. They got, what, 500 million users? Their stock price is tanking because nobody's clicking, nobody's doing. There's nothing to be able to do inside of there. So they're all trying to figure this out by going after buy buttons. We think it's a step in the right direction. But the challenge is this. They're using the old web 1.0 method. Step one, add to cart. Step two, confirm order. Step three, pick your shipping method. Step four, enter your name, credit card. Step five, your children's you know, social security number, your mother's maiden name, on and on and on and on and on. You can't do that in a mobile environment. But this is, we are in the, in the 21st century. We should have 21st century uh, solutions to be able to solve and, and maybe create a no-click checkout system. So, but these guys are going in the right direction. The challenges and what they haven't recognized yet is that consumers vehemently do not want to share that sensitive purchasing data with Facebook. Would you like Facebook to know that you have bought kitty litter? Do you have any idea how many kitty litter videos and commercials and stuff is going to pop up? Consumers just don't trust the social media out there. So there's some paradigm shifts that have to happen out there. Ultimately, here is our definition of what social commerce is. First of all, every transaction has to be social. It has to be inside the social media. It has to occur inside social media. And once the transaction is consummated, it must be able to easily be shared on social media. Because that turns it into what? A viral campaign. If I buy Taylor Swift albums, and I happen to be Betty the cheerleader at my high school, and I have 500 people following me, if I share that with my friends on Facebook, you know what? I'm an influencer, and they will buy that album too. So that's why that social sharing component has to be a part of the transaction. And that's part of the pre what we see failing with the, with the Twitter buy buttons and the Instagram buy buttons. All of those transactions occur outside of the feed. Well, that's no good. Um, once again, mobile. The, the lady before me sh shared how mobile is, is taking over the world. Mobile ad spending will exceed desktop spending here by next year. By 2017, it's expected that 50% of, of all e-commerce will occur on a mobile, tablet, or smartphone type device. 
So how do you engage with them? You have to be mobile friendly. And most of all, it's got to be simple. You know, you can't have 17 steps to check out. You will lose your conversions at every single step that they have to go through. So, so this is our definition. Obviously, this is a fluid thing. It's changing in real time. Um, you know, but we are seeing a lot of really cool, innovative, disruptive people out there. One of the companies that we came across was something called Soldzy. And basically, if, you like, if there's something that you like on Instagram or Pinterest, you can type the word like, and it will actually trigger a transaction for you to be able to buy that product that you are liking. Now, unfortunately, that transaction occurs outside of the social media. It's not easily shareable. There's multiple steps. You have to go to your inbox. You have to click on the email. You have to click on the link and all this kind of stuff. But it's definitely a cool, cool program and definitely going in the right direction. Um, you know, and, and likewise, they're also integrating with shopping carts and all that kind of stuff. So the advertisers are now starting to get little tools that allow them to be able to market and sell online. Another product that we've seen out there is called tweet to pay uh, This is a hashtag-based commerce system, but it meets the definition. Because if Katy Perry is going to be doing a little fundraiser for her charity and says, please tweet, hashtag tweet to pay, hashtag MRF25, and I follow her every single day because I'm her BFF and I'm going to you know, support her cause, when I tweet those unique pairs of hashtags, all of my followers see that. It instantly becomes viral to the 500 or 5,000 or 5 million people that are following me. It also goes back to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that there's proof. After the transaction, you get a tweet confirmation that you can share with your friends saying, yeah, I donated. I'm calling you out. I'm going to have you donate. And so this is like one step further along in the process. So these, these types of social commerce systems are important for affiliates because when you look at being able to market, you have to think outside the box. Your banner ad is ignored. But people love hashtags. What's that all about? So use something to get that attention and keep that engagement up and running. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little demo. But before I do, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of background story. We stumbled upon a statistic that kind of blew my mind. And that, and that statistic was video converts 400% better than static text, web, or images. Video converts 400% better than static text, web, or images. So if you're an advertiser, you really need to start thinking about video content and how you can use that to engage with your customers. Now, going back to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, that was all video, funny videos, train wreck videos, people you know, dumping water on their head. It was, it was very highly entertaining and very engaging. So how do we take that situation and now make it into an actually engageable experience? So this is a technology called videocheckout.com. And loads of makeup and put I'll, on I'll and powder and you're under lights and more. And your skin but it's basically an interactive video. It needs to look fresh. There's an embedded here. shopping cart. So for me, Proactive Plus. You can add products into the video. Me, like, this product and, and this technology and works directly I inside the Facebook the feed. So that way, as customers are watching their Facebook, they can just add to cart. Feel add to like cart, you're, you're the product appears in their out. cart. Your skin feels just normal. They're still inside and the video. Like there's no pop-up, there's no redirect. They're not leaving your, your target effect, audience. When I, we look at the statistics, it's like a if somebody has to pop up, redirect, or leave Facebook, really conversion good. ratios it's go like from 50% to 7%. That makes your media spend go through the roof trying to get an extra conversion. So why not get them at the point of interest? And then I so now that we've added everything to our shopping cart, I mean, it's a fantastic weapon to have. we're going to check I out use the mask in Facebook it helps my without ever having to leave. The, mask is there. the video, Take the sound, the motion that keeps that customer's eyeball glued plus. still keeps that engagement at the highest level possible. Another way to look at it is, is that from the prehistoric dinosaur days, we have been programmed genetically to spot and look for motion. That's why video converts so much better than any sort of other type of medium. Now here's where it gets interesting. After the customer purchases, they're incentivized to share this sale with their friends on Facebook. Now I'm not logged into my Facebook account, but 
basically you'd be having asking permission to say please put a picture of this product on your website and offer a 10% discount to all your friends hyper viral game changer so this is what social commerce looks like it works directly inside the facebook feed it's fun entertaining engaging it's easy to share it's mobile friendly So one last thing that I want to kind of talk about is that one of the things that's really challenging to the affiliate network industry is the cycle of payments. You have to wait weeks, sometimes months, to get paid on an offer that you promoted and published. On the flip side, for advertisers, you have to prepay lots of money. You don't get guaranteed performance. And at the end of the day, I think the system is broken. So from an, from an affiliate system, why not be able to take an affiliate who drives the offer on Facebook and have him get paid daily in real time. When he, his followers, his friends, his customers promote it, guess what? The affiliate gets paid, but so does the customer. It's time we turn the customers into little mini affiliates who are the influencers, who will be able to drive the sales, and most importantly, increase overall awareness of our brands. So this is some of the crazy stuff that we see out there. Real-time split payments, video sharing, social media, um, viral, mobile, and all these other pieces. So it's a lot of information to take in, and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But the next time you go shopping on eBay or, or Newegg or Sears.com, you're going to be looking for those stars and thinking about me. So I want to just thank you for your time and just kind of open it up for any questions you might have. Was this so mind-blowing that, like, there's no question possible that I could answer. Please. Okay. Yes. Great question. So right now, the biggest traction that we're seeing in this is political and non nonprofits. Right, if I'm a dog lover and I've donated to the local dog rescue foundation, I'm gonna be proud of having donated that, right? If I'm buying adult novelties, I am not sharing that with anybody, right? So it's really target dependent and customer dependent as well as product dependent. But the level of engagement is obviously gonna be significantly higher than if you just put a banner ad up there. Um, we're also seeing this being used by uh, large music industry uh, organizations like Universal Music, um, StubHub for ticket sales, and all sorts of other stuff like that. So, great question. Yes? Can you refer to the Yes. Can you Great question. So, yes, there are a number of different people that do it. Um, if you want to look back in time, uh, PayPal actually has uh, a split payment engine and they call it the Instant Payment Notification, or IPN. The problem with the IPN is that it just tells you that a transaction happened. The money doesn't actually physically move. So we're seeing affiliate systems trying to use PayPal to pay out their affiliates. So they get this giant data dump, and they have to figure out who to pay what and how much needs to be calculated. You just get a notice. So taking that to the next level, um, yes, we do do that. Um, there's variable types of split payments. Um, so that way, for example, you could pay the advertiser, you could pay the network, you can pay the publisher, you can pay the su affiliate, the sub-affiliate, the fulfillment company, the customer service company. Everybody can get paid in real time off the same transaction on a daily basis. So that can be calculated by hard coding, either a fixed percentage or a fixed dollar amount, or you can do it dynamically. So for example, if you've got 1,500 affiliates and this guy gets a 30% split and this guy gets a 25% split, the calculations can be done electronically in that fashion. Great question. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's been around for a while, but it's never been really effectively brought into the affiliate marketing and, and um, direct response type industry. So 
I think it's going to be a game changer personally because as an affiliate, you know, having to wait weeks or months to get paid so that way I can buy more advertising, that's frustrating. You know, on, on the flip side, advertisers, you know, don't want to have to prepay the network for, you know, 10,000 sales for next month. And so to be able to do this kind of accounting system dynamically is uh, a real problem solver. Um, you know, I think there'll, there'll probably be some hesitance to change, you know. I mean, there's people in the middle who are sitting on hordes of cash, and that's a good thing for them, not necessarily for some other people on the opposite ends of the spectrum, but ultimately, the ability to pay somebody on a daily basis electronically, I mean, this is the 21st century. I mean, it's one of those things that I kind of go, duh, why didn't we do this sooner? But yeah, I think it's going to change. It's probably going to take a couple of years for it to happen, and you'll start seeing all the affiliates, all the affiliate networks uh, promoting this because if they don't have it, they'll lose the affiliates. If they don't have it, they'll lose the advertisers. And it's really ultimately a benefit for all, all the parties simultaneously because now you have an independent third party um, scrubbing transactions, protecting the advertisers on the flip side, you know, uh, spoofing sales and all that kind of stuff, which hurt the whole industry, will probably wash out as well. Any other areas I can pontificate on? I, I can tell all sorts of strange stories, but you might get bored. All right, well, it looks like we've gotten all the questions answered. If you need me, any information, if I can help you out, point you in the right direction, feel free to hit me up online. Thanks again, everybody.